guys, welcome back. We are going to be listening to um, chapter two of the book Fossils. But before we begin, I want us to think about the text features that we have been talking about. So we're going to open that book and we're going to notice this page. We're going to notice it says content. What does this page help us as the reader do? The contents and sometimes this is also called the table of contents. Hmm, what does this help us do as a reader? Hmm, I'm noticing that there are some numbers here. What are those? Noticing there's something else, something else. This is the table of contents and it tells us all the chapters in the book. We are noticing that there are five chapters in the book. The last time we were um, reading this book, we read chapter one, Clues from the Past. And we were thinking about the question, what are fossils? And we found that on page seven. Now what we're going to do is we are going to be listening to chapter two, Preserved in Stone. And we are going to be thinking about how are fossils created? Now I'm noticing this starts on page 17. And as a reader, I know that if I wanna learn about how fossils are created, I need to turn to page 17. So I'm going to notice my page numbers and I'm noticing I'm not on page 17. So I'm going to flip until I get there. Ah, here we are. Chapter two, preserved in stone. I'm noticing I have a giant heading that is telling me what we are going to be reading about. We are reading about preserved in stone. Hmm, what's preserved in stone? Well, we've been talking a lot about fossils, so I'm wondering if this chapter is going to be about fossils. We do know that our focus question for reading this chapter is, how are fossils created? I want us thinking about this focus question the entire time we're listening to this chapter. Chapter two, preserved in stone. We know that fossils are usually excavated from layers of rock. We know that word excavated means that they're taken out of rock. But how did they get there? The material surrounding the fossil didn't start out as a rock. In fact, most fossils were formed underwater or in places where the ground was wet and soft. The process of fossilization begins when a plant or animal dies and is quickly covered up by layers of mud or sand Let's take a look at an example of how this happens. Huh, so we are learning, remember our focus question is, how are fossils created? So we are thinking about this process of fossilization. This is how fossils are created. And we're going to be learning all the different steps. Here's our caption for our photograph. This is a real photograph. Fossilized footprints tell us that this desert was once a soft, wet swamp. And I don't know if you noticed that before, but I'm noticing footprints. And those are fossilized dinosaur footprints and they go all the way up to where these people are working. I'm also noticing some faint footprints on this side as well. So they found these fossilized footprints and they now know that this desert was once a soft, wet swamp. So let's learn how are fossils formed. Becoming a fossil. Some 200 million years ago, a shallow ocean covered what is now California. A fish living in the ocean died and sank to the bottom. Before another animal had a chance to eat it, the fish was covered by a thin layer of sand. Over time, layers of sand and mud piled on top of the fish's body, burying it deep under the ocean floor. The skin and soft parts of the fish decayed, or they, um, they went away. They decayed, leaving only, skeleton, only the skeleton behind. What we read here, I'm noticing is exactly what's happening here. Here's a digital picture. This is not a real photograph, it's digital. To become a fossil, a fish would have to be quickly buried before any marine animals tried to eat it. Some of today's deserts were once covered by oceans and lakes. Here's that caption for our picture here. A skeleton is fossilized after spending millions of years under the earth. I want you to look at this photograph 
while I reread this paragraph. Here we go. Some 200 million years ago, a shallow ocean covered what is now California. Here's my ocean. This water is blue. A fish living in the ocean died and sank to the bottom. Before another animal had a chance to eat it, the fish was covered by a thin layer of sand. Here it's covered. There's no water around it. Over time, layers of sand and mud piled on top of the fish's body, burying it deep under the ocean floor. And we're noticing that it's buried. It's a skeleton. It doesn't look like that fish anymore. It's a skeleton. The skin and soft parts of the fish decayed or disintegrated or went away, leaving only the skeleton behind. After millions of years, there were many, many layers of sand covering the fish. The pressure from the upper layers was so great that the lower layers hardened into rock. The bones of the fish were trapped inside the rock. As water seeped through the tiny cracks and spaces in the rock, it dissolved minerals in the fish's bones. Other harder minerals replaced them. The result was a petrified fossil of the fish's skeleton. So what's left behind in a fossil is not the actual bones. It's a petrified fossil, which means the bones have now turned to rock. So the bones are not bones anymore, they're rock. And this stage we have not read about yet, so that's why I kept my finger here. So this fossil is now petrified. It is a fossil of the fish's skeleton. Here, Ooh, wow, so this is a piece of land where all of these fish died and were quickly covered by a layer of mud or sand. And then it was pressurized, so it was pushing down, the earth was pushing down on those fossils that then created um, petrified versions of these skeletons. Sometimes several fossilized fish or other animals are found together. Look at how many though, that's a lot. Finding fossils. Millions of years later, Earth's climate has changed and portions of the ocean have dried up. Earthquakes altered the landscape, bringing deep layers of rock to the surface. Rocks that were once at the bottom of an ocean are now pushed up to form a mountain range. This is this stage here. Rocks that were once at the bottom are pushed up. And now we're, being, we're noticing that things are coming back to the surface and that's how scientists are finding them. Present-day paleontologists excavating a California hillside are thrilled. They find the perfectly preserved skeleton of the fish that sank to the bottom of the sea all those years ago. So that's what this is happening. So this is what's happening. See how it's a little bit of kind of like a, um, a circle, a half circle here? So we're noticing it's being pushed up. And when the earth is being pushed up, so are all the fossils. And that's how paleontologists can find them. Lost in time. We learn a lot about extinct animals and plants by studying their fossils. By examining dinosaur fossils, scientists have learned how large these reptiles were and how they walked. They also discovered what dinosaurs ate and what their skin texture was like. It is possible to find out this much about every animal that lived during prehistoric... Oh, sorry, it's a question. Let me rephrase that. Is it possible to find out this much about every animal that lived during prehistoric times? Unfortunately, the answer is no. So I don't know if you guys can see this really closely, but all those little like spots of water are tracks. Tracks can tell us how an animal walked and how fast it moved. So these aren't just little puddles, those are animal tracks. It's kind of cool without a trace. It is not easy to become a fossil, and many animals never get the chance. Fossils are usually, though not always, the preserved hard parts of an animal. It's bones, teeth, or shell. Soft-bodied animals such as slugs, worms, jellyfish, and octopuses have no hard parts to leave behind. Most of these animals have vanished from Earth's history without a trace. So if it's soft, like a worm or a slug or a jellyfish or an octopus, there's no hard parts. 
So it can't fossilize. The only time that we do see it fossilize is if it gets stuck in amber or tree sap. There are more than 1,500 species of jellyfish. Here's our caption. Animals such as a jellyfish have no hard parts that can fossilize. Wow, look at this fossil, guys. Even well-preserved skeletons are rarely complete. So this is an incomplete skeleton of a dinosaur. Scientists use clues from similar fossils to learn about missing pieces. Even animals with bones do not always become fossils. To become a fossil, the body must be covered up very quickly after death. In most cases, that doesn't happen. After an animal dies, another animal may eat its body. Its bones may be chewed up or scattered. The animal's body may also decompose or rot. There are many extinct animals and plants we will never know about because they did not leave fossils behind. So to become a fossil, as soon as it dies, it has to be covered by sand, mud, anything that will cover it from other predators. This is the only way it has a chance of becoming a fossil. So we're noticing that not everything will become a fossil. Oh, and this is our next chapter. So let's go back and think about that focus question from our table of contents, this text feature here. How are fossils created? Do you think we've answered that question? Let's go back. This page tells us a lot about how fossils are created. And this diagram shows us how fossils are created. Over the next few days, we are going to be thinking a lot about how fossils are created. And we're going to be thinking about five distinct stages. So we're thinking about five stages of fossilization. Fossilization, remember, is the process um, of fossilization begins when a plant or animal dies and is quickly covered up by layers of mud or sand. And we did not look this up in our glossary, but it's a bold word, so we should. Miss Isabel forgot. So fossilization, let's look it up in our important words. Fossilization is the process of turning into a fossil. All right, so that's our focus question. Our focus question from our table of contents is how are fossils created? During chapter two, we read, especially on this page, how fossils are created. We also learned that some animals do not become fossils because they don't have any hard parts in their body. So let's think about that over the next few days and really pay attention to this diagram. This is your clue for the next few days, friends. This is your clue. All right, friends, that is it. Until next time.